Behind each fruit cane, we're going to leave at least one renewal spur of two buds for the future for next year. So this is one bud down here on the back side, and this is the second bud. In theory, we're going to take a fruit cane next year in 2011 and bring it out of this top position and then have our replacement spur down below that. Now looking onto this side of the vine, again, we're going to try to make a determination where we want to make our best cut. And I'm looking at right here to make our fruit canes for this coming year. And I just go ahead and whack away all that unwanted growth that we don't need and put it on the ground. Again, I'm not going to measure the or count buds, but I just know from experience that's roughly 12 fruit buds right there. The other thing a trained pruner will do is look for <coughs> canes that they want to retain to be basically in the sun, not shade canes. Because canes that are in the sun that get a lot of sunlight in the springtime are also going to be more fruitful than ones that are in the shade regime. Because again, we need sunlight on these buds to make them very fruitful. So uh, an experienced pruner should look for canes that have been exposed to the sunlight through the growing season. This cane here, you can see that it tried to grow very rapid. This is one internode. It's almost uh, eight inches long. And here's the next internode. This is considered a shade cane because it had to grow very rapidly in the shade to get out to the sunlight. This would not necessarily be a very fruitful cane for many reasons. So we would not generally want to retain this as a fruit cane, especially when we have other options. So we have that there. I'm going to remove this <coughs> and leave a replacement spur down there and one extra replacement spur here. All varieties of grapes, wine grapes, and table grapes can be pruned to cane style, but not all varieties can be cordon pruned. And at a later date, we'll do cordon pruning. Let me show you how to do that. Again, I've removed back to my first really good position that I could use for a fruit cane <coughs> for this coming year. And it's this one here that we're going to leave. Now it's a little bit vigorous in size. It's a little bit larger than the 3 8 So therefore I'm going to leave it a little bit longer to accommodate for the extra vigor. So this one here will probably be more like about 16, 18 buds and a replacement spur below it. And then over here on this side, we're going to go ahead again and remove our old fruit cane from last year with this because again it's used up its useful uh, energy and we're going to retain this one here as our fruit cane for this coming season remove the laterals the tendrils do not really need to be come off which are the things that basically hold the cane to the wire there we go and again a replacement spur left there So that is basically the finished product for this vine here. And then what happens is a crew will come in later and wrap the canes around the wires and put a twist them to secure them. And then our shoots will come from here. Just for purpose of the diam to show the diameter of the Sauvignon Blanc, you know, you can see basically it's about four and a half or five inches in diameter at the trunk. Uh, again, very healthy vines on this deep, rich soil. Um, what we have here, this vine was pruned to four fruit canes of about 12 to 14 buds long, and not all of the buds push. In other words, they not all emerge. <clears throat> you can see on this other side, there was very weak uh, buds, and that's part of the decision of the vine. Maybe that was not a good uh, selection left last year. But this, this cane here, to me, it, all of the positions push very well. They're very even. The growth is even. But again, what we look for in pruning this, this style of vine is our fruit canes to be roughly 3 eighths of an inch in diameter at the base and not too flat. A good color for the variety because each variety has a different color and something that's going to be 
out in the grown most of the season out in the sun because again the sun needs to get onto these buds for the next year's crop. This style of pruning is uh, more labor intensive, takes more experience, and uh, just costs more to prune. But if it's done right, it could be also beneficial. And what I'm doing is removing tendrils and uh, laterals off of this fruit cane that I'm going to retain this year right here. And our general principle is that we always want to cut back to our very first good position on our old cane. So looking from the end, coming all the way back, I'm going to go ahead and do this right here, mainly because this is smaller than normal diameter, this is small in diameter. These would not make good fruit canes, but if there was nothing else to use, yes, we would use them. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and remove this cane off of the wire. Remove the brush. That's the first thing we do after we've evaluated how the growth has been on the vine for the season. Again, I think this vine did moderately well. Uh, better watch where I cut that one. So this will be my 12 to 14 bud fruit cane that I have right here. And it will be tied down to this wire later on. This part here is was retained to develop some spur positions, some replacement spur positions, so we can get some canes off of it. Again, our most fruitful fruit canes are going to be ones that arise. A fruit cane is a one-year-old cane that arise off a two-year-old wood. And this actually is a piece of two-year-old wood right here, this two-bud spur. This here, is mo this here is more than two years old. So therefore, it would not be as productive as a one-year-old cane coming off a two-year-old two wood. So in taking a quick analysis, I see this got twisted here. It probably would not make a good fruit cane. There was some injury at some point during the growing season to this part of the shoot. If it was going to be spur pruned, it probably would not make any difference about this injury. But being that if I wanted to leave this as my selection for a cane, it may not be a very good selection at this time. However, but in looking at this vine, I see that this cane I have my hand on is by far more superior than this one. So I will opt to eliminate that, cut that back for my replacement spur for this year, and cut all of this back off and remove it. So this again here will be my 12 to 14 bud fruit cane. And I'm not counting, I just know by experience how long that's gonna be. So then this will be tied to the wire. This will be the replacement spur for here. So again, we generally have one to one and a half replacement spurs per cane, depending on the vine.